Hey everyone, I'm Ryan. You're watching 60 Cycle Hum. And in this, I can't talk. Hey everyone, I'm Ryan. You're watching 60 Cycle. Ah. Hey everyone, I'm Ryan. You're watching 60 Cycle Hum. And in this video, I'm going to be covering two pieces of gear. I've got a Sterling by Ernie Ball Mariposa here in white. I didn't even know that they were making these. I knew about Sterling. I tried the St. Vincent earlier in the week here at 42 Gear Street. Is this a good video? Is this, this good is content? This is a good video. But my uh, yeah. I'm in the driveway of Henning's garage <laughs> underneath a tent. Um, it looks really cool. Uh, those who know about me and things that I have and things that I like know that I have a Nutter Astro Captain, which I strongly suspect was a big influence on Ernie Ball when they came up with the Mariposa because uh, from about here forward, it's pretty much very, very similar in shape. But it is a different guitar. It does have different features. It's a different feel, different specs and loadouts and stuff like that. But visually, it is funny to me how close visually the Mariposa is to the Nutter Astro Captain. But anyways, I've also got a pedal here that I'll be checking out, the Clockwork Echo by J Rocket Audio Designs. It is an analog delay, as I understand it. We've got a mix control, a time control, repeats, speed, depth, and level. Speed must be for the modulation, which has a foot switch here, and there's a tap tempo, and there's a jack right here for an expression pedal for uh, expression time. But before we get into this, let's check out the guitar and get a bead for what it feels like. I haven't played it. I tuned it, but I haven't played it. I did enjoy the St. Vincent Sterling build. I think for the price that they charge for these, I think it's uh, it's really fun. I, the the uh, Ryan, do you need a hand? The St. Vincent was like 720 bucks. I don't know how much this one is. No idea. I no idea? A fret in hand if you want. Okay, okay. Uh, Max Solo is going to fret for me. Are you ready to shred? Yes. <laughs> It still sounds like it's out of tune, right? It's yeah. Hey everyone, I'm Ryan, you're watching 60 Cycle Hum, and in this video, I'm going to cover two different pieces of gear. First of all, this guitar, the Ernie Ball Sterling Mariposa. And this is the take five or eight <laughs> of the video already. <laughs> I, uh, I'm pretty far into takes on this one. I keep going too long and saying things that I want to backtrack on, so... I'm trying again, as Max Solo has pointed out. I'll use some clips. I'll use some clips from my previous tries because we did some fun things. We can we could do those do those things again too, by the way. <laughs> but anyways, the Mariposa. <laughs> but anyways, there's a lot of fun details here. I really love this little switch that they're doing over at Ernie Ball. It looks like it's a full size switch that's just sunken down into the pit guard. It honestly reminds me of the switches that were on my old Atari 2100, I think was the model. It was the wood panel one that we all played Pac-Man and, uh, you know, Pong on in the 80s. It's got that folded over metal uh, Sterling bridge on there, which I really appreciate because if you don't want to, you know, commit to a wiggle stick, <laughs> you can just lightly grab the back of it and hand manipulate it a little bit. It's it's honestly really smart. I wish that like normal strap bridges had that little lip to grab onto. Uh, similar neck might be the same neck as that Saint Vincent. This the shape feels very similar. This one has some sort of baked maple, roasted maple, fried maple, sautéed maple. There's so many different ways to cook maple. Microwaved maple neck on here does the same thing where it's satin going to a glossed headstock. A totally, you know, aesthetic choice. There's not really any function there, but 
it's really neat. It, it's a neat look, and it's a neat little extra detail that makes you feel like your guitar is special. Locking tuners, painted headstock. You know what? This what? actually looks like a roasted maple neck. Not a frozen and then microwave. Oh, frozen, yeah. But an actual roasted maple. Like when you go to the grocery store and they have roasted chickens yeah. versus frozen, getting like and then, yeah. frozen chicken nuggets. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You might be right. <laughs> it could be baked too, though. Maybe rotisserie. This is a rotisserie maple neck. <laughs> All right, two humbuckers here. Let's discover this guitar's secrets. And then after I cover this guitar, I'm going to use the guitar to show off this pedal. We'll explore this pedal because I don't actually know how it works. I haven't messed with it yet. This is the J Rocket Audio Designs Clockwork Echo. Um, it's some sort of analog echo thing here. All right, the guitar. Finally, after all this talking. I like how sparkly that middle position is. Back to the bridge. I tuned this thing before I started recording. It sounds a little bit off. I'm wondering if the intonation is out. Let's check the tuning one more time. Oh, you know what? I didn't even have my amp setting on again. <laughs> I had to do a retake earlier because I did that. It's hard for me to see the screen on my HX Stomp in this very diffused light here in the tent. Yeah, I suspect there's a bit of an intonation issue because it sounds uh, decent to me in the cowboy chord area, but higher up the neck, something's sounding a little bit off to me. I don't have a very sensitive ear, but I can tell every now and then if something is not quite right. I also, the last guitar I played was a very, very expensive, well set up guitar, so I might be a little bit spoiled now. Like, listen to this F minor versus the F minor down here, if I can do that. Sounds off, right? I think the intonation needs to be adjusted. Middle position. Bridge. Sounds like a humbucker guitar. Uh oh. Something's up with the volume control. Oh. What the heck? The volume only controls the neck pickup. Is that intentional? It could be intentional. It could be a blend control between the neck and the bridge. That very well could be intentional. That is actually pretty wild. Let's try that with some drive. My crunchy amp setting here. 
you can check out my Line 6 presets in the link below. Just checking my levels. I like it with the neck blended back just a little bit. Not like halfway, but like, think, pink. You can't really see it, but. Like, er. Also, if you completely pull out that neck pickup off the switch, I'm betting you can do this. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. That's fun. Now, I, I bet you anything that's an intentional feature. with the volume blended back up a little bit. Yeah, that's cool. All right. I think I've given a good coverage of this guitar. Uh, I, I'm assuming it's a similar price as the St. Vincent around the 700 to 800 mark. It feels appropriate for that. If you've been lusting after this body shape, but you can't afford the full on Ernie Ball sort of deal, or you want to go on a modding journey and you don't want to mess up an original one, I could recommend this. You want to do your own artwork on the pit guard because I know the original has a, a flourish with some plants on it and stuff like that. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. I think it's fully appropriate for its price point. I'll do the hand manipulation of that uh, of that bridge there. Go back to the surf setting. Actually, let's go for the ambient. Yeah, that's fun. All right. I'm going to dial in a clean amp sound here without my reverb on it. And we'll check out this clockwork echo. Here it is on. I honestly have no idea what to expect with this. I do need a hand. I do need a hand. A fretting hand. Yes, because exactly. then I can use this hand. This is a three-handed situation here. Okay, where do you want me to put it? Plucking, delaying, fretting. Okay, where? Where to? Um, let's focus on these two strings. All right, let's go. So that's the mix. There's the time. There's a modulation here. Okay, that's my repeats. It's hard to see the text from this angle. 
And this is a level control, so you can treat this as a boost as well, or a volume cut. That's actually really interesting. I don't know if I have another delay that has an output level control. It does feel like some sort of saturation preamp kind of boost, not just a full on like regular volume boost. Max is doing great. You need to come home with me. modulation gets wacky. It goes full wet, that's cool. Does it do runaway repeats with the repeats all the way up? He can't hear what's going on right now. That's fun! Wait, I gotta run. Trey's waiting for me in the Studio B. See you later. drive was coming from this. All that dirt is coming from a modulated delay pedal with that level all the way up. Yeah, it's like a pre-saturating boost before it because it's not really changing the volume, it's, it's changing a gain saturation within an analog delay pedal. That is kind of cool, honestly. It's like a tone roll control. I'm getting a nod <laughs> from the J Rocket rep who's nervously standing there watching me to make sure I don't say anything bad. No, he's he's cool. <laughs> How long does it get? I'm going to pull back that modulation quite a bit. It's not a super long delay. I'd say that's probably one of, you know, a 500 millisecond or somewhere around there.
There's something interesting going on with this circuit, especially with this level uh, kind of saturated preamp sort of thing going on, where when it takes off with a self-oscillation, instead of volume getting out of control, which I often experience with uh, delay pedals where I'm ramping up to spaceship sounds and stuff like that, that, that preamp is catching that volume and turning it into drive. This is very interesting. wackiness. Let's try to find some more normal sounds for people who like that sort of thing. impressed. I actually am. Like there's a there's a lot here to explore without being complicated. And you've got tap tempo which, which I haven't even explored. Well, I like that. I love it when you can p change the pitch of the repeats with the tap tempo. If you're shopping for an analog delay, this should be something that you're looking at. Absolutely. All right, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, dislike, leave me rude and nasty comments. Support us on Patreon. Click all the links for the sponsors of 42 Gear Street down below. It's an, like, this sort of thing is incredible. I mean, I, I'm sure it's great for you, the viewer, but for us YouTubers, that spend the vast majority of our lives sitting alone in our garages, our studios, our attics, our kitchens maybe where we record these things and never getting to interact with each other in person. Why well, it means a lot to us. Like this is a fantastic event for us. It's like team building, unionizing, <laughs> hugging, kissing. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of fluids being exchanged. <laughs> Glenn's over here. I just made him like. <laughs>
<laughs> wince and gag a little bit. <laughs> no, it's like this puts a fresh burst of wind in all our sails and keeps us going. Um, it, it means a lot to us that we get to do this. So, yeah, check out all the sponsors. Check out all the channels that are here. We're all photobombing each other. We're all crashing each other's videos. You're, you might see people that you love in the channels from other people that you love. And, and it's, just a, it's just a ton of fun. So, anyways, bye, everyone. Stay grounded.